So in the last few months, CCS has been a feature at a number of events. The global community understands the serious threat of climate change. Our global primary energy demand has doubled since the early 70s. Some 75% of the increase is from fossil fuels. We are the first human beings to ever breathe air with 400 parts per million of CO2. Coal is providing 40% of the world's electricity. We just want to ensure that that's supplied in a more environmentally friendly manner. They were looking at trying to apply innovative technological solutions to these complex problems that are not going to be changed overnight. And the heart of this issue is the myth that we won't have to use fossil fuels by the middle part of the century. The challenge here is you have a lot of countries that have large coal reserves. They're wanting to modernize. It is totally unrealistic to expect to meet any poverty alleviation target unless coal is in the mix. The world is using more coal today than it has at any time in the past, but it's undeniable that the burning of coal, just as the burning of oil and gas, releases CO2 into the atmosphere, which causes global warming. We're increasingly seeing a realisation that only CCS is going to deal with the emissions from fossil fuels. CCS is actually a very straightforward process. We capture the carbon dioxide coming from the combustion of fossil fuels. We compress it to such a degree that it becomes a fluid. That fluid is transported and injected deep underground, safely stored and locked away. We will not be able to achieve our very ambitious decarbonisation objectives without the rollout of CCS. China following and supporting the development of CCUS. We're now on track to have 20 large-scale projects by 2016. We've got two projects in North America at the moment, one in Canada, Boundary Dam run by Sask Power, and one in the United States. In the quest to uh, answer the CO2 challenge, we built this. 582 megawatts in Kemper County, Mississippi. We will capture 65% of the CO2. In this case, CO2 is not just a waste. We sequester it via enhanced oil recovery. It will have a carbon footprint, somewhat less than a conventional natural gas plant. It will also remove 99% of the sulfur and have a great profile in almost any respect. Now, coming from a maritime country, uh, when somebody is leading the way we often say that uh, it is the lighthouse. This is a lighthouse in the work uh, of achieving our goals. We can do this. We don't have to shut down these industries. We need to get onto the other foot and say the answer cannot possibly be just renewables. That is an all of the above strategy. When you talk to any industry leader, you're going to find that industry leader talking about the importance of a diversified approach for energy. President Obama made it clear that this is part of an all of the above uh, energy strategy. You have something of everything. We will have hydro, we will have solar, we will have wind, we'll have nuclear in the states that allow it, and we will have CCS on hard coal, on lignite, and on gas. No one can sit here today and tell me in 10, 20, 30, 40 years what the nation's energy future will be. The economic lives of the assets that we deploy are decades long. If you're building a multi-billion dollar plant that has a 30 or 40 year lifespan and a payback period of say 20, you want to be damn sure that the government's not about to pull the rug from under your investments. 70% of respondents were saying policy uncertainty is their major risk. We need governments to commit to investment grade policies, policies with the kind of certainty associated with them that encourage private investors. We need a new ambitious partnership of scientists, engineers, electric utilities and environmental authorities to guide carbon capture and utilization. It's this group gathered here today that can actually make carbon capture and storage happen. If we really want to decarbonize the power sector without CCS, it will cost an extra $1 trillion by 2035 and yet another $2 trillion by 2050. So the price that consumers of doing this is modest and manageable. The price of not doing it is immense. The price of not doing it is sending us off into territory which is deeply dangerous. The future of civilization is expensive, but it's worth the money. People will be just as willing to pay for climate protection, for national security, 
as they now pay for weapons for national security. We need to deal with this problem and we need to deal with it quite urgently. We need large-scale solutions. CCS is one of those solutions. Introducing technologies like this into the debate are the things that can best move the debate forward in a way that makes sense for the entire globe. And it sets a kind of example and model for other countries that are grappling with similar problems. When we worked with uh, others in the United States to develop this, we did it with the full expectation that the difficult thing would in the end be the good thing. If we're going to be serious about addressing climate change into the future, then we've got to understand fossil fuels are going to be with us for many decades to come. We've got to deal with their emissions. The only way to do that is to apply CCS. It's why I do the job I do.